It's time for some more quick and easy recipes, and I've got you some good ones this week. Hey friends, my name's Susan, and welcome to my home. Today I've got you four different recipes that will make your mouth water. They are so good. So let's get our ponytails up, and let's get to making some amazing quick and easy recipes. Come on, let's get to cooking. And let's make some creamy Cajun sausage pasta. I have got a Polska kielbasa. It says andouille. We like Polska better. That's just kind of our choice. But this is really good stuff. I've got some minced garlic, a little bit of olive oil, some slap your mama, a little bit of heavy whipping cream, some Parmesan, some tomato paste in the tube. I like that, easy to use. Got some onions already cut up. I've got some chicken broth back there in the back some penne pasta of course and a green and red bell pepper cut up and ready to go i believe that's just about everything so i'm not going to be putting in the red pepper flakes because that slap your mama has a lot of flavor in itself so let's get this cut up it says to cut it on the bias and get it in the pan and let's get started cooking and I have the salted water boiling for the noodles, and I've got the pan heating up. I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the pan. It didn't call for much. And I'm also gonna put in all the Polska kielbasa that I cut up in the pan. And let this start sauteing and heating up. And now that that's going really nicely, I'm gonna go ahead and add two teaspoons of the Slap Your Mama or Cajun Spice of your choice to the pan. And it's gonna make it very aromatic in here. The Polska is already smelling really, really, really good. And we're gonna let this cook just a little bit. I'll let this get nice and crispy, maybe a little too crispy in some places, but it'll still be amazing. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the heat and reserve these Polska, but leave all the good flavors in the pan. Now it's time to add in the peppers and the onion. It called for one medium onion. I had a really big one, so I just used half of it. And now it's time for this. I'm gonna have this on more of a medium heat for just a little bit to let this saute down and let the bell peppers get a little bit softer in the mix. And we're also going to add a teaspoon of Slap Your Mama into the peppers and the onion. This is definitely going to be very spicy. Hopefully that cream sauce will tame it down if it's a little too spicy. For those who don't like spicy, you can always use any other type of Cajun seasoning that you like. Um, they come in different varieties. They come in different spices. We just happen to like the Slap Your Mama. It is spicy, but it is so flavorful. It makes food taste so good. So let me let this cut just a little bit and I'll bring you back. And now that the bell peppers and onion look really good, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the garlic and let this simmer just a little bit, about a minute. You don't wanna burn your garlic. So we're gonna let this just simmer. Now this is looking really good. I'm gonna go ahead and add in, this is the heavy cream, <laughs> the tomato paste, and the chicken broth. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this in until it gets nice and smooth. And I don't know if you can tell, but it has started boiling a little bit. So I am gonna turn it down to low and let it simmer. It said for five minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this simmer its way down. Thicken up a little bit maybe. And then I'll bring you back whenever we get everything put together. And I've let this cook for about six, seven minutes on low. Let it simmer, basically. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in the half a cup of Parmesan cheese into the mixture and get that stirred around. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. And if you are, go ahead and press that subscribe button down below and ring that bell so you know each time I put a new video up. There you go, T you can't see it. And now, let's add the noodles in. And I only made half the noodles. I can't imagine how many noodles this would have been if I'd have made the full thing. Of course, I like a lot of 
um, sauce on my noodles, so this is not a problem. And of course, the last thing we are going to be adding into this wonderful dish is all the meat we cooked up earlier. Look at that. And it's going in. And I'm going to go ahead and stir this. Let this, mind you, it's not cooled off, I don't think. <laughs> but let this get all saturated with that good juice. The sauce in there. And then it'll be time to plate it up because it smells really, really good. And I don't think I need to thin it out any. I did reserve pasta water in case I did. But I like it. It looks good. I'm Like I said, I made half the noodles that it called for. So I think we are golden on that. Let's get it plated up. And this was so good, but so spicy. I should have used a little bit of a mixture of a regular Cajun with the Slap Your Mama because it was extremely spicy. And if you like extremely spicy, just use Slap Your Mama. If not, use a mixture, but this was so good. And you'll have to excuse the noise. Buddy's home with Daddy playing with the squeezy toy. So tonight we're going to be making some Southern style jalapeno pimento cheese. One of the girls at work, Chrissy, made some. Off of a little different recipe, but very similar. And I loved it, so I had to make it. You've got four ounces of pimento cheese, diced pimentos that are drained. 16 ounces of sharp cheddar. It actually calls for eight ounces of sharp, eight ounces for, of extra sharp. I'm just using sharp. I've got a fourth of a cup of jalapenos that are chopped up. I'm using eight ounces of whipped cream cheese, some paprika, some onion powder, and garlic powder, a fourth of a teaspoon of each, and half a cup of mayonnaise. We'll see if that's all the mayonnaise that we need. I'm leery about that. And of course, a little salt and pepper on the end. So let's go ahead and get it all put in the bowl. And let's make some jalapeno pimento cheese. And let's get this all put together quick and simple. 16 ounces of sharp cheddar cheese. This is the finely shredded cheddar cheese because you know that makes it good. I've got uh, four ounces of pimento cheese that, pimentos that is, that are drained. I'm putting those in real quick. This is uh, paprika onion powder, garlic powder that are going in next. And I'm going to put in the mayonnaise. Like I said, I'm debating on whether I might need more mayonnaise than this, but you know, I usually do pimento cheese that has a large mayonnaise base instead of the whipped cream cheese, but I loved it, so you know I'm going to try it. The fourth a cup of jalapenos that are chopped up are going in. If you can find the whipped cream cheese with the jalapenos in it, apparently that's really good. That's what she used. I couldn't find it, so I had to make my own. And then, of course, I am putting in the whipped cream cheese, the 8-ounce tub. And then it is time to get this mixed up. It does say to use a hand mixer, which you know me. I don't want to get my hand mixer out, so I've got to figure out if I can do it with this spatula and it get mixed up good enough. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and add some salt and a little bit of pepper into the mix and mix that up also. And I've got everything mixed together. I grabbed the mild jalapenos instead of the regular hot ones so it doesn't have as much flavor as I would have liked, but it tastes good. It's just not as spicy. Y'all know we like it spicy. But this is going in a sandwich because I am gonna make some grilled pimento cheese sandwiches for supper. Now the way I think to make the best grilled cheese, you've got to have some butter in the pan and have it on a good medium heat. Now you put it down into the butter and you cover it. That way the steam helps to melt the cheese. And I will bring you back whenever I flip this thing over. Now the secret to a good grilled cheese is not letting it burn, but letting it get nice and crisp. And each time you put a new slide on, Put some more butter down. I'm gonna lift this pan up because it's mighty hot and I would prefer it not to brown the butter before I put this sandwich on the other side. You can see what I'm doing. Those who have never made a grilled cheese before, this is how you do it. You can do this with grilled cheese, grilled pimento cheese, whichever way. 
now the butter's melted. Now you put the side down that's not brown, and look how pretty that side is. And you cover it up, and you let it set on. I've got it on about a medium heat, probably for about two minutes, maybe. And then you're gonna have an amazing grilled pimento cheese sandwich. And this is what it looks like when you get done. Brown on both sides, and the pimento cheese is just oozing out of it. Look at that. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but I did. Mm. And it tastes so good, guys. This, dunked in that, is a awesome meal. Whenever it's a little cold outside, which tonight it is. And that is what's for dinner tonight. And tonight we're going to be making some crack burgers. I know it sounds weird, but <laughs> it should be really good. I've got some fully cooked, thick cut bacon already done. Buns for the burgers pound of hamburger, sharp cheddar cheese, some sour cream, and some ranch dressing. Let's get all that combined so we can get some crack burgers on the grill. And let's get the hamburger to put together. I've got one pound of ground beef here in the bowl. I'm going to go ahead and add in about three tablespoons of sour cream into the mix. Mix that up real good. Yeah, I thought this was going to get a little bit messy, so I put my gloves on, guys. <laughs> I'm not into that. I'm also going to add in about a fourth a cup of cooked and crumbled bacon, which I've got the already cooked bacon, so I'm going to go ahead and get that into the mix also. I'm going to add in a cup of shredded cheddar cheese and get that going into the mix and two tablespoons of ranch dressing is also going in. This looks really good and I'm going to go ahead and get this all mushed together real good and form some patties. It says about four patties which sounds good to me. We'll have some patties on the burgers and let me get the grill heating up. And I've got my little ninja grill heated up. It's still not warm enough outside to do it outside because it got cold again guys. So let's get them in the grill. These are a little bit juicy, so I'm going to go ahead and spray the grill down a little bit. That way they don't stick. And then put the burgers on the grill. Ooh, listen to them. That way, got to be careful so you don't burn yourself. They're ready to roll. Let's put the top down and let's get them cooking. Okay, guys, these burgers are juicy and they fall apart whenever you cook them. So I would advise cooking them not on a grill, but in a frying pan. But they look amazing. So let's get it put together. These burgers were so good. They were so juicy, they were falling apart. Don't do them on a grill. Do them in a pan or an air fryer. They're amazing. And let's make a quick almost dump and go meal. It's pretty quick. I've got one pound of hamburger meat and I've got the pan heating up. I've got two bell peppers and onion chopped up. I've got one box of rice aroni Mexican style. I've got some garlic, minced garlic. I've got chili powder, paprika, and cumin powder in this container. I've got some oregano in this container. A can of diced tomatoes, some tomato paste, and this is actually a little bit of chicken bouillon. So this is all ready to go into the frying pan as soon as we get started on the hamburger meat. And this is starting to brown up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add in the bell peppers and the onion to the pot. And I've got a nice big pot here. I'm also going to add in the garlic, the oregano, and the chili paprika and cumin are also going in. So everything's in the pot now. Now whenever your hamburger has browned up, if you have a lot of grease, you can drain it or put a paper towel in there and dab it up. I'm gonna leave it in because it's got flavor and we're gonna need some juice for the rice itself. The next thing we're gonna put in is the tomato paste and the can of diced tomatoes. They're going in.
our box of rice aroni is going in. And I'm going to go ahead and stir that around real quick. The liquid in that tomato will help cook the rice. Plus, we're going to add a little bit more liquid here in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and put the packet of Mexican flavoring, Mexican style flavoring that is, into the rice and stir that around also. There we go. I'm going to add in half a cup of chicken bouillon or chicken broth, whatever you want to call it. You could just add regular water, but you know, everything's better with a little bit of chicken broth in it. And this is getting stirred around. I'm going to turn this on high till it boils, and then I will turn it down to low and let it simmer. I will cover this and let it simmer to 30 to 45 minutes. It calls for 45. I don't know if we're going to need quite that long. I'm thinking it's probably going to be more like 35. But, let me go ahead and get this boiling and covered up, and I'll bring you back whenever we get ready to put it in the plate. And I wound up adding another cup of water to this and turning on letting it boil for just a little bit longer. Because the rice didn't seem like it was done enough for me. But it's looking really good now. Look at this. So let's get this in a bowl. And here you go. I'm going to go ahead and add some Mexican cheese to this bowl. Give it a little bit of cheese appeal and it's nice and hot so it should melt the cheese really good and of course a little bit of sour cream to go on top y'all know me and that was one and a half cups of broth that's all you need and this was so good guys Quick, easy, almost a dump and go, and your family will be so happy with this. I told you those recipes were so good. And if you haven't already, press that little button down below and subscribe. And give me a thumbs up and press that little bell. That way you will be informed every time I put a video up. And make sure you leave me a comment letting me know where you're watching this video from. Until next time, see you then.